This is 21st Century Reformation at 21stcr.org. Proclaiming the one true God, and uh, the statement that I'm making is, if you believe it, then speak it. And uh, so that's a good principle, I think. You should speak what you believe. And uh, I think that uh, uh, if we are unsure if we believe it, then we need to resolve that question. So then we can be clear in our minds and so that we can speak with clarity to our friends and our neighbors and those who, uh, with whom we may have to do. I think this whole business of speaking now, we're beginning to shift from the picture of God himself to you. And uh, we're talking here about a very personal matter. Uh, this is uh, you, as it were, uh, in one of your most important roles as a Christian, and that is what you speak, what you convey on uh, of the message to others. And that's not just your pastor's job to do. I think, don't you think that it, it, it's something that's relative to every one of us? Uh, it's significant for every person. Uh, and so what we're going to talk about here is uh, I originally had titled this uh, Preaching the One God Message. I, I changed it a little bit. I'm saying proclaiming it because I think um, sometimes we don't want to think of ourselves as preachers, but we realize that we all really can be, should be proclaimers of this word. So... But, uh, and this is also uh, very personal in a sense, too, because it has a lot to do with God working in you, working in his people. So my, my talk today is not so much theological in that sense. It's more practical, I think, in a way, and more exhortive. And uh, I do want to say this, that it can be a fight uh, of sorts, sharing our faith, because not everybody's overjoyed when you begin sharing uh, this message. I don't know if you've noticed that, but I, I've, I've encountered that problem. So, uh, so it can be a fight. I think that uh, that just challenges us the more to uh, then think about strategies for success and what is wisdom in this. Uh, who sets out to do any endeavor thinking, I hope I fail, I hope I fail? Everybody wants to succeed, don't we? In, other, in whatever we do. People go into business, they want to succeed. I've never met anyone yet going into business saying, I hope this just falls apart and doesn't work. <laughs> you know, we, we want to succeed. Well, of all the matters of business that we could deal with, I think this one about our God and about our faith, we would want to be successful in that. Uh, we may not uh, hit a home run every time, but we want to get in there and, and get in the game, as it were. And uh, so wisdom, what is, uh, what is the wisdom that we need to be effective. This comes down to every one of us. Okay. Uh, I'll use a few military metaphors. Uh, I just wanted to mention to you uh, ahead of time that I'm not uh, happy about war or fighting or anything like that. <laughs> so, so don't uh, infer that from my, my metaphors. But uh, Jesus used military metaphors on more than one occasion. Paul did a lot, several times. And uh, so I think there's something there for us to learn. And uh, 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 Jesus then told his disciples, this is a little bit like going to war, and if you're going to go to war, you need to sit down and think about the cost and things like that. Uh, and then in verse 33 of the 14th chapter of Luke, he says, in the same way, none of you can be my disciples unless you give up everything. Oh, my lands! You know, uh, someone said, you know, Jesus was a terrible recruiter. I mean, who's going, hey, come and follow me. You know, if, if things go well, you'll get beat up, you'll get maybe killed. You know, wow. So th this, is the, this is the picture. Well, let's just get right in and talk about some strategies. One, I think one of the first strategies, some of this is just very practical. Uh, the first strategy is a positive attitude. Uh, I'm saying here the next to the easiest battle for the enemy to win is when you think you're going to lose. Because you're panicked and you're like, I, I, I'll never do this, it won't happen, and so on and so forth. Well, when we're, we're working with the Word, uh, well, I think we should have confidence, not so much in ourselves, but in the Word. 
There is energy and power in the Word of God. It is effective. And uh, so we, would, we got to realize we're not really what it's about. It's the Word itself that has the effective uh, uh, work that we would like to see in ourselves and in others. So, uh, so there's only one thing easier for the uh, enemy to do. I said the easiest battle for the enemy to win is when you don't show up. He doesn't have to expend much energy on that at all. And uh, so here you are, if you say, let's just don't go out there. You know, I mean, we're not going to do this because uh, we can't win. It, it's, it'll never happen. And so on and so on. Well, so we just stay home. How many times, let's put this in practical terms, how many times have you looked at a friend, a neighbor, a relative, someone you know or maybe don't know so well and said, ah, they wouldn't want this. They wouldn't care about this, or they would probably be against it. Guess what? You're setting yourself up to not even show up. How do you win when you don't show up for the battle? We can hardly win the day when we're not going to get out and actually get involved. There is no version of fighting the good fight of faith that doesn't involve fighting the good fight of faith. So, it's, uh, so there is some fighting in there. Second strategy, rely on our strengths. We have great strengths. I think sometimes we don't realize it. The Word itself is our strength. So if you're not going to get into the Word, you're probably leaving our greatest, our greatest weapon along the way, on the side. You know. So, uh, so get into the Word of God. Uh, Paul says in 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, 3 through 5, and I think uh, it may have been Joel Hemphill. Someone was mentioning this earlier, but it says we're human, but we don't wage war as humans do. But we do wage a war of sorts. Wow. We, uh, we use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. That's a, that's a nice way. Uh, I, I like the uh, false arguments thing that uh, uh, Dale Tuggy was talking about. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. Now notice that. Every proud obstacle that keeps people from what? From knowing God. Very important thought at this point. We've got to decide what our mission is and what, what it's all about. If our mission is just to argue effectively and win an argument, and I'm not against that, you know, I'm all for it, but if that's where it stops, then we're not really getting anywhere. I, I don't think this is going to go where it needs to go. We want to bring down error, if as it were, false ideas, false arguments, so that what? Ultimately, people can know God, or at the very least, know Him better. Wow. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. So, wow. Well, say, I'm nobody. Well, I'm nobody. We're all nobodies in that sense, I think. But we know some wonderful things. We know a wonderful God. And why shouldn't we declare Him? Why shouldn't we? I, I just, I don't know. Perhaps you have a good answer why we shouldn't. I don't know what it would be, though. I, I don't know. Another one of our great strengths is reason. I mean, we talked about the Word of God, and that is it. But I do think many times that reason really is on our side. And if you begin to talk with your friends, your neighbors, your relatives, that if you begin to demonstrate a little bit of the reason that attaches to truth, that's not because we're uh, able to so be, be so discerning. All the, I mean, truth is reasonable. We just need to tap into that fact. And truth is so often much more reasonable than our errors that we encounter. So I think that reason is a, uh, a winner, as it were, the great majority of the time. And uh, I'll talk about that a little more as we go along. Be prepared, another strategy. It's the uh, Boy Scout motto, I think. Uh, learn skills. Uh, these are skills. Uh, skills of speaking with people, skills of, of speaking the word, 
uh, skills of arguing nicely. Uh, you know, those, those are all skills uh, that uh, we can learn and grow in, and, and I think pray about. I, I love uh, what Dustin said and uh, Joel Hemphill uh, similarly, but don't make it harder than it is. Uh, Dustin, for goodness sakes, he's carrying a cheat sheet in his Bible. <laughs> what do you think? He's got, this is beautiful. I, I, love, I love this. Well, you know, think about it. Focus on some important things, some key things, and make some notes. Put them in your Bible. I have a, you know, I've worn out more than one Bible writing in, in those. So, uh, uh, but focus on key things and don't make it harder than it needs to be. Use your weapons. Don't, don't, can you imagine uh, someone in, in the army or the military and they have this great weapon here and, and the enemy's coming and here comes the sergeant. Fire, fire, you know. And they say, well, I'm afraid I'll make them mad. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> oh, well, I don't know. Somebody's going to get mad. I, I don't know. When they do, just move on. Isn't that the principle behind Jesus' teaching to uh, his disciples when he sent them out two by two? And you go into a city. I think sometimes we have a mentality. We, we go, we find someone, and they're going to get this. Well, okay, well, that's admirable. So we work with them, but they don't get it. And, you, know, you know what I think Jesus' advice was? Well, don't pitch tents and camp there forever. If they're not interested, or maybe they're not interested today, move on. Because while you're so determined this particular individual is going to get this, there's someone down the road you could be speaking with that really wants it today and would love to, uh, love to hear it. So, uh, so uh, be ready to, to go to, uh, to fight if you need to. If, and that's, I think we do. And aren't people worth it? I mean, think about what we're doing here. It's not about us. It's not about us even winning an argument. It's about people. It's about the parties that are involved here. It's about the people who need to hear this message. It's about the God whose message it is. It's about our Lord Jesus. It's certainly his message. We're actually participants in his work. It's all his business. I think sometimes we, we lose track of that. Someone yesterday was talking about who's the boss. Well, he's the boss. So we got to realize we work for somebody. You know, this, this whole business of reconciliation of man, mankind to God, it's actually Jesus' ministry. Yeah. Hebrews 7 and 25, you know, he, he lives now forever to what? To bring people to God. So that's, that's, uh, that's the principle. Well, we're just participating in his work. We should, we should remember that. We're working in someone else's work. And we want to do well, don't we? Uh, I think that's it. Be prepared with prayers. I think Joel Hemphill mentioned the importance of prayer. Pray for people. And I think that uh, if you'd like an opportunity to speak to someone about things that are important to you along these lines, uh, then uh, pray for that person. And pray that God would give you an opportunity to speak with them. Uh, I love this in 2 Thessalonians 3 and 1. Paul says, finally, dear brothers and sisters, we ask you to pray for us. Pray that the Lord's message will spread rapidly and be honored wherever it goes, just as when it came to you. And we have to remember that. Say, well, why am I, what's this business about me sharing? And then that kind of uh, an attitude. No, remember, someone probably shared with you or me. That's how we got here. This is important stuff. It's real. You know, and, and it's good. So pray. If, uh, if the Apostle Paul, how about uh, him for an effective guy? He, he knew what he was doing. and He was out there doing it. And yet he's asking them to do what? Pray. Pray that doors be open. Pray that good things would develop and that the Word of God would be spoken freely. I think that's... So if he needed to do that, we need to do that. I do. anyway. Strategy number four, get help. This is simple. Rely on a friend or a pastor who may understand these issues better than you do. And sometimes you don't even have to be with that friend or pastor. Maybe somebody can just ring up on the phone and say, hey, you know, I'm talking with, with my mom or whoever it may be. And trying to help her to understand what, uh, what I'm saying and what I'm believing about 
about God. And uh, so, yeah, get some help, get some advice, get some encouragement. Uh, books, papers, and websites are out there. So uh, encourage uh, your friends uh, by giving them a book and say, here, take, would you mind reading this? And, uh, you know, if you, if you would, and just tell me what you think. Yeah. Uh, and that's a great way. Uh, maybe, maybe they will. Some folks wouldn't be interested in that. Fine. But, uh, but there are those who say, yeah, I'll read it. I've had that to happen. And then come back to me later, and, and sure enough, they did want to talk. And uh, so that's interesting. I love this. Uh, we're really uh, pressing this forward, and uh, I'm very encouraged about Anthony's new translation. And I have to tell you, it's, uh, it's, this is a mighty weapon right here of sorts. I think uh, there's two things that are wonderful about it. It's a good translation. It reads well, it reads easily. The other thing, and what I really get excited about, is all of the commentary, good notes, excellent stuff. So, yeah, take advantage of this. Get several copies. You know, give them to your friends. What a, this is, uh, this is a, great, uh, a great new resource that's available to us. And, uh, and I think you'll, you'll find it helpful. I've been trying to figure out the, uh, what do you say, acronym? I don't know how to make this work. Everybody's got new something. You know, this is the new Revised Standard and the new, you know, anyway. Pardon me. But, uh, but this one is the... Uh, O-G-F-O-M-M, -M. and I, I can't figure out how to quite get that down a little bit, but we'll work on this and we'll, we'll sort this out. Another thought, a strategy that may be helpful, and that is choose the higher ground. Uh, this is, a, again, a little bit of a military uh, thought, but uh, one of the great battles of the Civil War, and again, my speaking about this sort of thing doesn't mean I, I like battles or, or wars or I, I hate them desperately. But anyway, it does still make us a, uh, maybe a, an interesting example to look at. But anyway, one of the great battles of the Civil War was probably lost because of who got the high ground, and that's the Battle of Gettysburg. Uh, tremendous battle. I think at that time, uh, most would agree that the greatest uh, general in the war, certainly, and some would still say was the greatest general of the war, and that was Robert E. Lee. On, uh, and he was uh, fighting on behalf of Virginia. Uh, but Robert E. Lee arrived on the scene in Gettysburg, but General Meade had something that maybe non-military people wouldn't think that much about. He gained the advantage of the high ground. That was probably a determinant factor in this entire uh, great battle of the war. Uh, and uh, Robert E. Lee did something that he had not been doing up to that time. He lost that battle, and it was a very important battle uh, from, from his perspective. Why did Meade win? Meade had the advantage of higher ground, and in, in that was a key reason that he won. Uh, otherwise, the, the armies were fairly well matched, and probably the greatest military strategist was on the other side. But, uh, so, ah, what does this mean to me or to us? I think sometimes we immediately assume that our role in any uh, work that we may do with a friend, a neighbor about our faith, is to be defensive. And... I don't think, when I say that, we've got to help them to understand that this idea is wrong, that idea is wrong, so on, so on, so on. But, but in reality, when we decide that we've got to convince them that they're wrong about everything, we just put them on the higher ground, and we're the ones now that have to work from that. Do you see what I'm saying? I, I think that, uh, that there is such a thing as us assuming the higher ground ourselves sometimes. Let's start, just, just begin thinking about some of the things that we can bring to bear in any discussion with any friend. And say, you know, the, the Bible just seems to me to be very, very clear about one God, and that's my faith. And I love God, and, and I feel like uh, this is a, a good and profitable matter, uh, my faith in God as one being, one individual. And uh, uh, the scriptures seem to say that very clearly. Uh, so now, it's interesting because I think when we do that, in some sense, we're assuming the higher ground now. And we're planting our flag. And we're beginning to say, yeah, okay, if you want to challenge that, go ahead. But, 
But, you know, this one God business is a very strong matter, I think. It's strong for me and my faith, strong in the scriptures. And it seems to me that it's a, uh, it is the prevailing matter of faith. And uh, so, uh, whatever. Don't seed uh, the ground too quickly. I think we often go ready to, uh, to prove that some view of God is wrong. Perhaps, uh, you know, it's the Trinitarian view or Benetarian view, whatever. We go to do that, but are we able to go instead and, and, and gain the ground and take the higher ground and say, here's our position, and, and kind of hang with that. Here's, here's what I like about this. This is what I love about my faith now. Uh, many of us have had a transition in faith. You know, why am I here? This, this is better. And uh, so, yeah, choose the higher ground. I think many times uh, we can do that. Be audacious. I don't think this works for everybody. Another military uh, uh, point to make, uh, General Stonewall Jackson, also uh, a southern general in the war, uh, who fought and won many battles because uh, he was a good strategist and all of that, but he, was, uh, he led cavalry for uh, Lee, and uh, the, uh, but he won greatly because his strategy was this. He says, when you're outnumbered, and you're outflanked, and whatever it is, when you, the enemy is, is out after you, he's, his view was, be audacious. Just give it everything you've got. Go crazy and win, you know. So this was, this was the view of another general. He was uh, unfortunately killed by his own men uh, by accident in the war. <laughs> but, but, uh, so not everyone maybe can take this audaciousness and make it work. Uh, but there is a time for it, and I, think I mentioned Joel Hemphill and others of you. I, I look and see rather audacious people. I think that's exciting uh, sometimes. But, uh, but, I, but it's, a, it's a strategy. It, it works.